latest attack on our country by the Biden administration cannot go unanswered. It seems that Washington does not want to accept the fact that in the new geopolitical realities there is no place for unilateral dictatorship and the broken scenarios of containing Moscow, which the US short-sightedly continues to deploy, only risk further degrading Russia-US relations. We knew that this was coming in one form or another. It was just a matter of time. And on Friday, uh, Russia very demonstratively retaliated against those punitive measures that Washington announced against Moscow earlier this week. Perhaps the most interesting part is that eight top-level Washington officials have been banned from entering Russian territory. And when I say top-level, I mean highlight reel. Big you know, names, aren't they? We're talking the head of the FBI, the director of national intelligence, the secretary of uh, Homeland, and security too, I people who are powerful decision makers in Washington. Uh, also in that list, Susan Rice and John Bolton, historically uh, two politicians who uh, are Pretty known hawkish, for they? their hawkish yeah. anti-Russian rhetoric. Uh, alongside the names, Moscow explained that these individuals had been chosen precisely because they all bear responsibility for promoting America's anti-Russian policy uh, direction. I have to say, this is a really strong move because you Usually, such bans are done on the lowdown, in the quiet. They're not announced publicly. So clearly, the Kremlin here is so frustrated by what's going on that it wanted to make a really bold, clear statement. Uh, other than that, 10 American diplomats have been expelled. A number of uh, American organizations suspected of interfering in Russia's internal affairs mm. have been told that they need to stop their activity. Um, and it was also made clear that if the US continues to behave this way, then more can and will be done, including reducing the diplomatic mission here to just 300 and taking action that would be harmful to U.S. business interests. Um, so a very loud, very extensive announcement, leaving the door open for an improvement of relations, but at the same time being practical uh, and preparing for the worst. Yeah, and as you say, it, it comes not long after what uh, America said they were going to do as regards sanctions. What was said on Thursday? Well, you have to look at the backdrop to this. Hostile, undiplomatic rhetoric coming from the White House. Of course, now the infamous interview, Joe Biden calling President Putin a killer on international television. And then this final blow dealt by Joe Biden signing what can only be called a sanction spree. So that package included 32 Russian entities and individuals sanctioned for alleged interference in last year's presidential election stateside, a range of financial and technology uh, firms targeted uh, for apparent uh, cyber attacks on federal agencies. Ten Russian diplomats expelled, borrowing money internationally made more difficult for, uh, for Russia too. And while anyone reasonable would look at this and say, well, this is pretty extensive, apparently Joe Biden claims that this was his take it easy on Russia set of sanctions yeah. and that ultimately all he really wants is to be friendly and turn the pressure dial down. The United States is not looking to kick off a cycle of, ex of escalation and conflict with Russia. We want a stable, predictable relationship. Now is the time to de-escalate. Well, saying that after announcing a slew of sanctions is mixed messages. It's illogical. It's very confusing. I mean, generally, punishment and de-escalation don't go hand in hand. Um, so you can see why the Russian side pointed out that at the moment there's a huge disconnect between what Russia says, or rather what Washington says, and what Washington does. Calls from overseas to refrain from escalation sound hypocritical. In essence, they are trying to talk to us from a position of strength. We have repeatedly warned and proved in practice that sanctions and other pressures are not only futile, but will also result in disastrous consequences for those who decide on such provocations. So clearly, normalized relations between the US and Russia are going to require a serious shift in gear. But at the moment, it does definitely sound that whilst Moscow, of course, doesn't want a deterioration in relations, and it's tried everything it can to avoid that, at the moment, it feels that that might be the only option left. It's not unusual for, for politicians to say one thing and do another. Uh, I think that he's playing to his political base by imposing sanctions on Russia. Uh, I think if he wanted to impose sanctions, he certainly could have imposed more sin significant ones that would have it, it would have penalized uh, sectors of Russia if uh, his allegations about Russia hacking the United States were true. The Democrats are trying to use, you know, the, their anti-Russia positions for political. Uh, benefit. Uh, I don't really think it's going to benefit them very much. I think it would be helpful to have a real dialogue between President Biden and President Putin. Unfortunately, because of the Democrats and the 
their attacks on Russia during the Trump administration and the Russia hoax. Uh, there was never really a meaningful summit between President Trump and President uh, Putin. I, I think that we should get over that and there should be a, a meeting between President Biden and President Putin and the United States and Russia should try to resolve their differences and find ways to cooperate.